Hello everyone, Hyper here, and this will be the 10k special video. Um, my channel reached 10k subscribers. Thank you so much to all of you for uh, subscribing. So before we get started with the actual content, uh, there is a giveaway going on on my Twitter where I'm giving away game time and some merch t-shirts uh, like this one. And then for those of you who don't use Twitter, I also have one on my Discord uh, that's over here. So if you want to join, just make sure to join my Discord, then go to the 10k giveaway channel and react to the post. Uh, winners will be drawn on March 21st, so if you're watching this video after that, then just ignore what I just said. So since I'm not raiding quite yet, um, and my channel did reach 10k, I thought this was a fairly good time, um, or as good as any, to tell you guys the story of how I started my YouTube channel. So, this whole thing starts again back on the private server that I used to play on that I mentioned in my previous video, where I was raid leading in a little guild called Serenity. Now, if you actually go on YouTube, you can look up Serenity, um, kill videos from Cataclysm, and I'm pretty sure I still have a few up on there from like a different account. So this was kind of my first run in with YouTube. And then, as you guys know from my previous story, I moved on to retail and I started uh, raid leading in a guild called Legend. Now in uh, Nighthold, not in Nighthold, in Emerald Nightmare, we hit uh, Ursoc. And that was either the third, second, third boss of the raid, depending on how, which order you did the raid in. But on this boss, we again hit a hard wall. This was kind of the first wall of the raid, because Ursoc, if you don't remember, was a DPS check. Fairly easy DPS check because it was so early in the raid, and Emerald Nightmare historically, as you guys might know, was a very, very easy raid. But when you're a casual mythic guild, there's no such thing as an easy mythic raid. So we get to Ursoc, and on this boss, we're hitting the DPS issues. So we're not making the DPS check, we're seeing low numbers. And I asked myself, what can I do to help everyone improve so we can make this DPS check? So at this point, I got fairly okay at using Warcraft logs. Um, I obviously logged all the raids. I would go on Warcraft logs to kind of check out what the top DKs were doing, um, you know, just to get an idea of what I should be doing. Also looked at my own logs a little bit. And this is kind of where I really started to dabble with Warcraft logs. So I told my guild, you know, just go on Warcraft logs. Plenty of guilds have killed this. Um, you know, just look at the build, bring that exact build to the raid and we'll be okay. Now I didn't realize this at the time, but in a casual mythic guild, no one knows how to use Warcraft logs, or at least not back then. And Keep in mind, this was already Legion, so Warcraft Logs was fairly popular already at the time. Uh, maybe not as popular as now, but it had a lot of users, and most people were using it um, in the Mythic scene. So, the next day comes of Raid. We go in there, nothing's changed, uh, we're hitting the same issues, and I just kind of compare talent builds of every single player in the Raid. Now, these were classes that I had no idea how to play. Uh, classes like Hunter, you know, Boomkin, Shadow Priest, uh, Mages, whatever classes, Healers. I had no idea how to play these classes. So I went class by class, um, or player by player, looked at all their talent builds, all their stat priority, compared it to other people who were using, um, you know, these classes, what legendaries they were using. Now this was early in EN, so pretty much whatever two legendaries you got at this point you were using. But if they had other options, um, you know, just to kind of keep in mind uh, what they had. And I did this for the entire raid, um, or most of the raid, but it was at least like 80%. And after this boss was killed, um, or like right before it was killed, I decided that I can't just go on like this to just keep min-maxing every single player within the raid. So instead, I'm just going to help them all out at once and tell them how to do this for themselves. So I recorded a video that was, I don't know, about 45, 50 minutes long. And this used to be up on my channel. 
uh, for you know the first few months when of, of me making videos but then I ended up taking it down because looking back at it it was not good oh god it was not good <laughs> so I had no experience making videos where I would just talk and show things um, I had experience you know making kill videos things like that but I had no idea how to put together like a guide type video so this video that was si as simple as this is how you check your talents, this is how you check your stats, this is how you check what legendaries you should be using, and this is how you check cooldowns. So, four things. If I made this video today, I can explain it in probably 5-10 to 10 minutes, and it's going to be fairly in-depth. So this was a 45-minute video. You know, a lot of the people in the guild did watch it because I told them to watch it. But this was my first ever video that I put up um, on, my, on this channel that I'm currently using. After this, um, again, I try to help people out with key bindings. Again, going back to the problem that in a casual mythic guild, I know this is going to be hard to believe, not all people use key bindings. Some people just installed WoW, leveled to cap, and kept everything as default. They had key bindings 1 through 9, the rest of the abilities they clicked. So, this was another point that I wanted to improve in the guild. Obviously not everyone was not using key bindings, most people were, but there were a few who weren't. Um, and even those who were, maybe they weren't setting up key bindings properly, they, you know, just had some overly complicated setup for it, or you know, whatever the case may be. So my second video, that actually turned out to be fairly successful further down the line, was how to key bind. Now, I use a fairly weird key binding. Um, if you watch that video, you will know that I move with ESDF rather than WASD. But um, I kind of give my thoughts on how to key bind and you know, what a key binding should look like, what a key binding layout should look like for, for either of those setups. Obviously, this is going to be different for PvE and PvP. But this was just to help out everyone in the guild on how to do key bindings. Because you have things like keyboard turning, you have things like backpedaling. Um, backpedaling, I'm just going to put this out there right now. Sometimes it's good. I get this on some of my videos. Haha, <laughs> he backpedaled. Sometimes it's good. And actually, that is something that you will see at the high end. A good player will know when to backpedal but most of the time he will not. Um, so after this, I just thought, why not just make a video, a guide, on everything that's basic in the game, that you can think of as basic. Macros, key bindings, you know, how to find your setup. So these were my first few videos. After key bindings, I went up to macros. PvE, PvP, mouse over macros, interrupt macros. Um, that video was not as successful, but I still made it. And after this, I thought, why not start making DK videos? You know, specifically for DKs, because at the time, there were not that many DKs out there. Um, there was one DK YouTuber in particular who was putting out videos, um, but I felt like there could be more content about DKs out there. So I made my first ever DK guide in patch 7.1, and this is still up on my, still up on my channel. Um, now keep in mind, this guide I put up pretty late in patch 7.1, so it wasn't like uh, the guides that I do today where a patch drops and then a few days later to a week later I have a guide out for it. This was like a few weeks to a few months before uh, 7.1.5 came out. So that video, you know, it did okay. A few people watched it. And then I just kept improving on that. Let's make videos about add-ons because I use add-ons all the time, I like add-ons, add-ons make my life easier, so why not share the add-ons that I find very useful? And then it came uh, the Exorcist Ray Tools tutorial, the Warcraft logs, how to upload logs tutorial, and then I joined MLFA. And this is where patch 715 came out. So I put up my Breath of Sindragosa guide for patch 7.1.5. Um, and this guide, you know, I was expecting it to have like 
100 views and then within the first few weeks it would get like a thousand views i upload this guide i don't remember exactly what day but i upload it i go to sleep or later that day i go to sleep wake up the next day and this video is at 10k views oh my god that was absolutely incredible i had no idea that you know people would actually be interested in this i just put it out there because um yeah i just like making videos so why not so this is where i started making real dk guides uh this was the first one uh, it's fairly short but after this i kind of changed how i was going to make videos i changed kind of my philosophy i put in a little more effort into the videos and really started to improve the setup. So from here came all the guides, DK guides, um, you know, anything that was challenging in the game. I did the artifact challenge guides for Unholy Frost and Blood. Uh, those did very well. But that is how I started making guides and how I started making YouTube videos. Uh, further down the line, once I got into an even better guild and my opinion started to hold some value to people because prior to this um, you know anyone can make a DK guide you can be in the worst mythic guild that's only killed one mythic boss you can put a guide out there um, people are not really going to question your validity on YouTube but when you when it comes to opinion pieces it's important to have some sort of um, something backing that opinion right you need to have some sort of validity when you when you say something so this is when i got into ak started raiding higher in the us this is where i started putting out some opinion pieces as well and honestly the opinion pieces um which i love doing by the way have been mostly things that i think about outside of of the game and outside of youtube so these were things that I would always think about, uh, things I would have conversations with with people. So sharing these opinions actually improves the way I think about the topics. Because whenever you're trying to convey an idea to multiple people, it's important that you have a clear point. You know, you have you have everything laid out clearly. So in my last video, I also promised that I update you guys on what's next, both for me as a raider and for the channel in general. And I've had some time to think and I decided that I will continue to raid in the top end scene. I put in currently two applications, one to a guild that starts with an L and ends with Imit. And then the second application is to a guild that rhymes with fig num build. Now we'll see, um, I'm waiting to hear back, and if I happen to get into one of these guilds, then I will be raiding at the top US scene. If not, then, you know, oh well, and I will end up joining uh, a guild in the range of, of like US 5 to 20. So I definitely want to keep putting out top end content for you guys, because that is what I enjoy doing. Um, being the most competitive that I can be within this game. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I don't really have much content going on right now, obviously, since I'm not really playing the game at the moment, unless you guys want to see like League of Legends and then PTR content. But until I happen to hear back from these applications and the guilds that I applied to, um, I will just put out some opinion pieces, maybe some MDI stuff, things like that. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. To see when I post new videos and also keep in mind that I do have that giveaway going on both on Twitter and on my discord. See you guys on the next one.